So when I was younger, my favorite YouTube videos were shop update videos. And I'll link some of my favorite ones down in the description that I used to love watching. And I thought when I started my YouTube channel, I wanted to do a shop update like every day because I thought that they were so fun. But I had to wait. He had to wait, you know, at least a month or so for something to update itself. Lo and behold, now, years later, I'm really tardy at doing shop updates. So today we're going to have one. The first one is little Lydia here. Uh, she was born on January 3rd, so she's almost three months at the time of, the, of this video. So she's going to be walking around with me. She loves being in the shop with her dad. Let's just start here in this corner. So this is a, uh, some of you have seen this before. This is about a 340 pound French anvil, 400 pound Peter Wright. We're going to be doing a video about these anvils uh, in the future, so I won't talk too much about them. Pan around the shop quick so everyone can get a taste of what what's coming, what things look like overall. And then we'll come back over here to this corner. Air compressor. Very temporary, simple grinding setup. Um, I have a dust extraction system outside that works really well. Um, one modification that I need to do to it in the near future, it has two bags on it and a T split off. And I need to put an air gate so that I can use one side for metal shavings, one side for wood shavings, so that there's no chance of uh, lighting the wood shavings on fire, which I've done before. So. Anyways, um, you also notice that the floor in this corner, and in most of the other corners actually, is very wet. Uh, it's just springtime here, lots of, lots of um, snow melting, and that's kind of caused the problems there. But that's okay, it'll dry up soon enough. Over here, I wanted to show some kale wool. Um, I have all of these boxes and bags, and I have another, I think at least two boxes of it. I have the two inch thick stuff, and one inch thick stuff. If there's anyone looking for kale wool, and uh, if you need a testimonial, I think that kale wool is the best forge insulation. You probably should cover it with something like a castable refractory, but it's the best forge insulation that there is. So if you want some, especially if you're local and you can come pick it up, um, it's all, most, you know, most everything is kind of for sale there as far as the kale wool goes. Cluttered racks. This is another uh, result of kind of the springtime and the, the humidity, the, the wet floor. You notice here on the lathe, I actually polished up all the rust off of it recently and, and oiled it. And you can see exactly where I forgot to oil here around this ring. Even when I wipe, when I wipe my finger on this, you can see the moisture coming off of it. But it's actually rusted this edge really bad. So I need to polish those surfaces up that I missed and re-oil them because they get rusted very badly very frequently shaper is kind of doing its thing steam hammer a little bit of an update there uh, you notice it's got two big pipes coming out of it uh, my friend samuel corey great fiddle player as well as just a handy guy came and helped me put those in those are actually made out of a drill stem so they're really heavy um, and so they, they work really good for this purpose so this is the input and exhaust from the compressor outside. It means that it's really quiet in here when this hammer's running. I've been doing quite a bit of work to it to make it run just that much better. And um, I'm really starting to be happy with it and it's very usable now. So I'm thankful and I'll do a better video of that in due time. Something that I was working on tonight, I had a custom order uh, for a chipping hammer that looks kind of like this. Um, they wanted the flat, wide-ended chipper on the one side and kind of a ball peen on the other, and a little heavier. So I went ahead and just kind of made up this design, not that it's anything super original, but uh, this, is un, this is just rough ground, unheat treated. I just stuck the handle in it so you could see that. If there's some interest in more me making more of these if, if anyone's interested in buying some of them let me know or even a different configuration um than the ball peen and the and the chipper uh or the flat chipper rather so there's that uh this is the all days an onion power hammer bigger forge that was just on making some two and a half pound square billets for some square rounding hammers there that are on order now, last time there was any kind of a shop update, 
you probably, I'm not sure if I talked about, but the, the walls here have been insulated partially just on this first 40 feet of the building. And that kept it very livable in the winter time. I also had the privilege of finding these uh, insulated tarps for very cheap. And so there's two layers of those actually, and they do a very good job of, uh, of just kind of isolating this area off. So as far as future updates for the shop, or my thoughts on how to make this shop more of a dream shop, I'll just kind of share that. Lydia is very interested in that too, as you can see. She's just having a great time. Um, obviously, it'd be nice to get some cladding on the walls. Um, I'll, I'm going to go with a galvanized tin, which is similar to the roof. It kind of has that um, industrial, antique industrial feel to it, so to speak, as well as the brand new uh, galvanized steel. Let's flip you over here so that you're a little bit more comfy. Um, is quite shiny. And so taking videos and pictures and even just working with kind of that shiny galvanized steel that has the reflection in it, uh, when you're, say, working with a piece of hot steel, it reflects off the wall. It looks really neat. Lord willing, we'll be able to put a grinding room where the grinders are now and just outfit that area much better and make the dust collection system much better. As well as pouring a concrete, somewhat of a concrete floor, or rather a concrete perimeter, around the edge uh, for the grinding room, for the workbenches and such that are over there just for ease of uh, cleaning up and having things nice and level. But I do really like the gravel for, excuse me, for a forging area. The other update that I'm really looking forward to, I have the supplies to do and I just need to afford myself the time, is I have a jib crane and I bought a large steel frame. And so I'm gonna pull, it's, it's uh, made out of I-beam. I'm gonna pour this frame full of concrete and then mount the jib crane to it. And the, the jib crane will be on one side or one corner maybe even. And it's gonna be like a portable jib crane base. I want it to be kind of right here where I'm standing, the post somewhere here and the jib crane is gonna be able to swivel over the top of the steam hammer, over top of the all days and kind of service this whole area. Um, and the plate or, or the base rather is gonna weigh a lot by itself. But if I put that lathe on it, and I have another lathe, a big 11 foot long uh, railroad lathe, and if I put both of those on it, and maybe even the shaper, that'll add up to about 10,000 pounds of counterweight for this crane. And you might say, Ethan, why not dig a, dig a big hole, put some concrete in and mount it that way? And I could do that, but I may want the position of the jib crane to change over time, especially if I choose to expand into the rest of the shop space. Um, hence also why I didn't pour a concrete foundation for the steam hammer because I may move that as well. So it's just, uh, it's sitting on the, on the big, big steel plate um, that I made for it. And I have those big tongs, uh, those big eight foot, or they might be nine feet tall, I think, blacksmithing tongs from a locomotive building shop. I recently got some eight inch round steel, which is I think off of a, a a train uh, car axle and it fits perfectly in those tongs and so with the crane and the steam hammer working and the big steel the big tongs I think we'll be able to do some fun projects with some really big steel and uh, and some cool videos so that's kind of what's going on I wanted to show one more thing not in the shop in my garage actually but I think you'll find it interesting Ta-da! this is what I wanted to show you this is a 1947, approximately, 46, 47, something like that, international KB-8 truck. Now, my grandpa and I kind of partnered together, so to speak, very kind of him, very exciting, to buy a couple of old trucks and maybe some more stuff in the future and get them going, kind of have our fun with them for a little bit, uh, get them going as in get them running, get them in good shape and resell them. This was the first truck uh, that we that I brought home, and it was actually in an accident, sadly, but it's recovered now and, uh, and just starting to kind of work on it. The outside is in pretty good shape. The engine just needs to get running now, so that'll be a project that I'll be working on kind of on, on and off uh, as time allows. Let me show you the inside. 
This is one of the things that I think is just priceless about this truck. Interior is in really, really good shape. Um, I believe that there was a restoration done on this truck about 15 or 20 years ago. And they did, uh, they did a pretty good job. Interior is really good. It's not missing any knobs or anything. Has a grain box on it. This is all made out of fir wood. And it is in really solid, really good shape. So pretty much what needs to happen is, is it needs a carburetor rebuild and then just some odds and ends cleaning out of the fuel tank and it should be ready to rock and roll. And so I'll do, I'll try and do a video of that as well um, when that gets up and running. So with that, that's a shop update, a little bit of a house update too, or a family update rather. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.